All right, so I want to kind of kick off this YouTube series showing what it looks like to grow a software agency to 100K a year. And the reason I'm doing this is because I think we're seeing an opportunity right now in software that is kind of being ignored. And there's kind of like two parts of the equation here. Well, there's two sides, if you will. So you have the one side who's just of developers who are like pretty negative about AI. Um, anytime it does anything a little bit weird, they just like say, hey, look, it kind of sucks when, okay, 1% of the 100% you don't like. And so you just ignore everything it has to offer. And then there's the other side where I think developers just feel like their job is just going to be completely wiped away. I think the landscape as a whole has definitely changed and we're at an inflection point. The, the classic, go get your CS degree and then go get a job at like a big tech company, you know, that landscape, not even a big tech company, um, but just really any company in general, I think that landscape has changed. But I think those who have agency here are gonna do really, really well. And I'm gonna show you why. I'm not even that far into my journey. I just landed my first client that I'm building kind of a suite of software for. And I just wanna show you how stupid fast you can move on your own. I'm a previous software engineer. And so I have like a good idea of tooling and I have a tech brand background. So I know how to, I know what I wanna do and I know how to kind of put the pieces of the puzzle but I'm no longer building those pieces. I simply just have to know what are the pieces of the puzzle and then do the work. Uh, what I would say so far in my experimentation is you can't just try to one shot everything. Like you still need to be the architect, you need to be thoughtful. And rather than trying to turn a hundred hours of work into one hour, I think trying to turn a hundred hours of work into 10 hours, um, you end up with a much more suitable code base that's gonna be like, that's just work and you're gonna have a lot less battles. So starting slow and being methodical is definitely the way to go. So I just landed my first client. And the way that I did that is I just started on Upwork. And as basic as that might sound is I just went to Upwork and I knew I kind of wanted to work in the mobile app space. So what I did is rather than just like sending proposals, I said, look, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna find people who want work done with something that I might be able to relate to a little bit. And I landed my first client after eight Loom videos. And so I think having this ability to like empathize with the customer, show up with an understanding of their problem, being able to communicate, not using words like back end, front end, UI, AI, forget all that crap, right? Like nobody cares. Um, they just want to know if like you can build the solution and like their dream idea. And so I just landed my first client who is a weight loss coach. And we're in this environment now where for so long, software has been mediocre for everyone, but great for no one. And I think that that time is like that changes now. And so I think we're at the beginning of a whole new software revolution. And if you get with it, not only do I think you're going to have a shitload of fun, I think you're going to make a lot of money too. And I'm going to show you how I'm doing it, trying to just build to 100K a year. I know there are a lot of people who like to talk about, you know, 10K a month, 20K a month, 30K a month. I'm focused on adding value. I'm focused on my inputs right now. And so land my first client with a Loom video. And I'm going to explain to you how I approached just the, the development start of this. And I'm only one week into this project. And here's what it looks like. So we went back and forth a lot on the proposal to just like really dial it in. And I think this is the most important part, being really detailed with the customer as to what they want, because ultimately you're gonna use this to do the following. Um, I'm not gonna show you the proposal just out of like respect to her, but basically what I do is I take the proposal and I'm gonna kind of like blur, blur this out here. Um, and I just throw it into a, into a GPT. And then at the bottom, I just throw in this prompt. And this is kind of the key here. Is I basically just ask it like, look, here's the context of like what I'm doing. Here's all the tools that I'm gonna need to build for this end solution. And then please go ahead and ask me as many questions as you can until you think you feel comfortable to build a database schema for me. Because if you can get your database schema locked down and put into Supabase, from there, all you're doing is just guiding the AI and cursor. Hey, go plug in this piece, go plug in that piece. And not only does it work, it is the funniest crap ever because in what you will accomplish in a day, it's still blowing my mind. 
So that's what I did. And I'm doing this fresh. I've already done this before. Let's just see what it spits out for me. Um, I'm using 04 mini high. And again, you know, that's this is part of this era. Like you have to experiment. You got to see what works and all that. I think I might have used a different model. What I can tell you is that AI is on some like easy, no think, quick shot solution, right? It asked, it asked me a lot of questions and I think I timed it. Like the first time I did this, I mean, it, it took me just under an hour to answer all the questions. Um, Cause you need to be thoughtful. Like these things matter a lot and you don't want to trade short-term gratification for like long-term pain. And long-term pain comes when you have a shitty database. Like you don't want that. So I spent a lot of time making sure that that was done. And then once it's done, you just say, um, well, I'll just start a new one. Uh, and I'll just say, I'll just, I'll just grab the proposal. Um, please create a database schema from this. It's okay. Please don't ask any questions. Um, once it's done, then it's going to give you, you know, whatever schema it creates, you put it into your SQL editor in Superbase, run it, boom, database done. Pretty stinking cool. So yeah, here it is. It's amazing. Now in this instance, like this database would probably suck for what I'm actually trying to build. Um, Cause it's just like, I hadn't given it enough information to build something great. And, and that's the thing here that I'm using is like, it is, it feels like the best at anything, but you still got to give it the right amount of information. So I would just take this, throw it into your super base, call it a day. Um, I don't really have like, and then, you know, you end up with, your database and then you can start where, wherever you need to but so that's all i have today basically this year is going to be focusing on really like how am i acquiring customers um really focusing on making sure that i'm diligent about getting to 100k a year and then like what that niche looks like personally that niche for me is going to probably be in the health and fitness space you have a lot of influencers who are doing really really well in this space and they're cobbling together crappy software and they need better software. And I think you can find this really in any community led or training slash coaching based businesses. And I think this is a gold mine. And I think it's in general, the niche that I'm going to probably try and stick to. And so for me, like this is just like the first part of packing my snowball for her, um, for this client. And so I'm super excited and going to keep building. Uh, there's a lot of topics to talk about in this space. So this is video one for me and uh, we'll see how this series goes. Cheers.